I was a nut growing up. <laughs> I was, my mom used to take me to all these garage sales and we'd buy the old record players and all this old, all these old contraptions. I remember I once wanted a whole circuit breaker, like a 200 amp circuit breaker from an old building or something like that. So ever since I was a little kid. You wanted a circuit breaker randomly? Sure. <laughs> we just take this stuff apart like crazy and mom and dad's stereo system never worked. I once rigged up Christmas lights in our family van, which blew the electrical system in there right before we had a big trip to Christmas time. And so <laughs> I had to sort of tell my parents this story. There was a little yelling going along and, you know, some, you know, if you want to be a scientist, you're going to have to start thinking a little more methodically about this stuff. And it was second grade. <laughs> But I was always building robots and I had all kinds of contraptions. I am one that I really enjoyed, I think it was later on in high school. Um, I connected a fireplace fire to a voice recognition module. And so if you said, wouldn't it be great to have a fireplace fire about now? And so this little circuit would trigger a relay and all of a sudden the fireplace burst into a ball of flames. <laughs> it was an awesome party trick, but um, also a little dangerous too. I love that intersection of, of writing low level code that actually makes things happen. Lights turn on, robots move, you know, really the down in the, in the bowels of electronic circuits. A big learning actually experience. I built this beautiful contraption that was supposed to go pick up these little cubes and dump them into a hole. It's like a contest with these robots and um, spent over $3,000 on this and almost failed some of my classes because I spent so much time. And I remember I brought it out to the, the day of the competition and I pressed the start button and this big robot went like four feet and stopped. And, and I didn't design it. I spent so much time building this thing in such complexity that I failed to sort of you know, build it for the application. And you know, I think that was a really key thing about you know, engineering. You can build crazy, beautiful things, and I love that. But at the end of the day, they have to work. And I remember the person that won that contest spent a weekend, took a, a remote control car, put a plastic bag in the front, and he won the contest in several thousand dollars. And I had a nice credit card debt after that experience and a lot of expensive looking, cool looking electronics. <laughs> so did you make any other robots that worked after that? Yeah, that was kind of the end of my robot building days. <laughs> but I've always been into building kind of crazy things. I'm working on all kinds of things in the woods. <laughs> um, but they're really on the side and they haven't been a real focus right now. But someday when I get back to them, I've done some dabbling with this idea so far. And I want to make the trees talk. So these are like little microphones that are distributed throughout the forest in little black boxes that are waterproof. And um, they're distributed, they're wirelessly sending signals back into a hub. And um, so that hub is doing processing, some natural language processing, some, some speech recognition. And so you're able to actually speak things to the trees, and as if you're speaking things to the trees, and then they like answer you back. But I get very intrigued by so many, so many different things. Um, you know, right now I got my head so wrapped around sensors that that's my life. There was a guy actually, Jesse Shell, um, someone that you know, your, your readers may be really interested to, to Google. He gave a talk at DICE 2010 that envisioned this world filled with different sensors and that all of life would be part of the game. And all of a sudden we got to talking a little bit and, you know, and I think that fueled the ideas. Once you start getting confirmation from other people that think it's also a good idea, then it starts picking up a lot of steam and traction. So we make these little wireless sensors and they're stickers. They literally like those puppy stickers kids play with us, you know, like Hello Please Kitty stickers. Us. Yeah, sure. Um, so what we've done is we've actually put a little circuit inside of those sensors. And that circuit's got an accelerometer and some other sensors and other, and other stickers that measures the uh, behaviors of people when they interact with objects. So you put a little sensor on a toothbrush and you start measuring the fact that you're brushing your teeth back and forth like this. Um, or you put it on a, a vitamin bottle or a water bottle, for instance, and we can measure when you take a sip of water. We even have one on a toilet seat and it measures when you put the lid down. <laughs> and that's a great example of you know using humor to change behaviors, annoying behaviors in a family and make something that once was something that kind of annoyed somebody and turn it into a joke or turn it into something that's kind of playful mm -hmm. and solve a real problem at the same time.